Welcome back, everyone, um, for the for the grand finale. We really appreciate um, over the course of the last several days, folks making the effort um, across various time zones and locales, and uh, making the effort to be here to what I think is a really, really wonderful and productive um, uh, session. And and uh, we want to start, of course, as we have um, to, to give a land acknowledgement, um, acknowledging that the the conference, even though it's virtual, is um, is situated uh, where we where we are situated upon. Uh, traditional and ancestral non-ceded land. Um, um, so some of us, um, Danielle specifically, is in Portland um, in Multnomah County, um, and there are the ancestral lands of the Multnomah, the Wasco, the Kathlamet, the um, Clackamas, the Collets bands of the Chinook, the Tualatin uh, Kalapua, the Malala, and many other tribes who uh, made their homes along the Columbia and Willamette Rivers. We pay respect to the elders, both past and present, as well as future generations, and this acknowledgement is really meant to demonstrate our commitment to working to dismantle systems of oppression that have displaced indigenous peoples and the ongoing leg legacies of settler colonialism. And, and as it says here, there's a link and, and obviously we can provide in the chat as well. If it, you know, many of us are focused on year end giving um, uh, and, and even trying to do a little bit more possible this year, um, the Native American Family Center is, is certainly a great uh, option uh, to consider. Um, and there are obviously local options that, that you can look into as well. A little housekeeping for the last time, we'll say this, hopefully uh, you know the drill by now, but um, uh, if you have your, uh, your first name and your last name and your project affiliation and your Zoom name, it makes things a lot easier. Um, I'm not sure if the chat is enabled or disabled at this point, um, but certainly the Slack channel is, is enabled. Um, um, folks know, of course, that we've had uh, issues um, over the last uh, little bit with, uh, with, with some Zoom bombs. Um, we have folks diligently that are, that are working to swap those, uh, those trolls away. Um, but if you see anything, please say something. Uh, you can chime in or you can, uh, by the Slack, let us know. Um, Caitlin and uh, Vanessa in particular are, uh, have done amazing work uh, in, in, in keeping things afloat, so we appreciate it. Um, and there's the, um, the help desk on, on, on um, Slack as well, if you have questions or anything else you need to talk about. Um, we are committed, uh, uh, as, as we've demonstrated, to try and keeping this as, as safe and inclusive a space as possible. Um, Vanessa and Danielle and Caitlin, who are all on the call, um, are, um, are here and standing by. And if you have anything you want to share, um, there's a dedicated code of conduct um, a channel within Slack uh, to, to share that up. We are recording, um, uh, so just just be aware of that. And our intention is uh, shortly after the holidays um, that we will we will make these recordings available. So um, I think with that, that's uh, that's probably it by way of uh, of housekeeping. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, we're a small enough group. Um, I'm sorry, I was I was about to, to, to transition, and then I saw Danielle's incredibly cute child, and I got I got so distracted that I, I lost my place. That is a great way to, to kick off this, uh, this piece of the, um, of the, of the meeting. Um, this is an acknowledgement. Um, uh, some, not all of our um, program committee folks are here. Um, this was an all volunteer effort. Um, folks worked really diligently. Um, I, um, I'm proud to, to, to call, call this team uh, a team and, and be a part of it and, 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 and have these folks as colleagues. Um, they really did uh, terrific work to, to make sure every, um, every detail was considered. Um, so if you, if you see them, give them a virtual high five. We also obviously could not do this um, without sponsors, um, even in a virtual environment. These meetings uh, uh, cost money and, and um, uh, obviously we needed, uh, we, we were hoping to get um, uh, supporters to underwrite uh, these, these grants, which we'll be talking about in a minute. So we really do give um, deep, deep appreciation to Crossref and Hypothesis and, and Ithaca and, 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 and to the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. Thank you for, for making this event a reality. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to turn it over to, to Juan Pablo uh, to, to talk about our Rapid Response Fund. And um, Juan, just let me know when you want me to advance each slide, and I will, uh, I will do so. Perfect. Uh, so great. Uh, thank you, Greg, for, for sort of doing all of that uh, housekeeping things and to acknowledging our sponsors. So, we, you know, we did want to sort of just also say specifically that, you know, the, the sponsors have uh, provided uh, around $50,000 that we could give out as awards. And we uh, were really hoping that this event was some one that not only could we support the community by um, by you know gathering everyone together and enabling the conversations, but actually to give some very tangible support to uh, as many projects as 
as as we could and so that was uh, part of the sort of the fundraising effort and uh, these uh, different projects that you see listed here all contributed to being able to make it happen so that we could give some uh, some tangible uh, support and awards uh, to projects that uh, would be able to put them to good use especially during uh, what has been a very challenging year so we can maybe go to the next slide uh, we, you know, in, in setting up these, uh, the, the awards, we sort of tried to come up with, uh, with some criteria that we thought would be well aligned with, uh, with the spirit of the conference and the moment that we are um, living through. Uh, and so the criteria were sort of aligned under on three different uh, set of principles. One was alignment with open practices and principles, as you might expect from, uh, from, uh, from the joint roadmap for open science. Uh, so wanting to make sure that we were, like, that all the projects are, are, were awarded, were well aligned. Uh, we wanted to have this be a rapid response fund that was able to support projects that were in need at this moment. And we know that it's been a challenging year for, for budgets, challenging years for people around their uh, personal situations, their professional situations. And so we wanted to see some evidence that they were needing funding at this particular moment in time. Uh, and the third was to make sure that the projects that we awarded were not just going to be uh, of benefit to the, to the people, to the awardees themselves, but that there was some evidence of, of impact to both the awardee and also to the large larger open scholarly community. And so we, we listed, came up with some criteria that aligned around these three principles and evaluated every project that came in under those, those criteria. Next. Uh, the award committee was made up of sort of a, of a subset of the uh, of those of us on the on the larger program committee. So we, we make sure that we had multiple people evaluating all of the different applications and that we could come together and discuss uh, the criteria for those awards. So there are just the names of the, those of us that were on. Uh, on the selection on the selection committee, um, we ended up uh, we wanted to fund way more projects out of all of the applications that came in, and so this is uh, a shout out to those pr uh, projects that you know were, were perhaps not selected. There was really a lot of uh, of really worthwhile uh, initiatives and applications and people really deserving of funds. Um, and in the end, um, using the criteria, we came up with eight projects that really uh, spanned uh, from technical tools, some very sort of specific uh, tools to scholarly communication initiatives around and then projects to do with reproducible re research practices. Um, we tried to uh, see that the projects also span the sciences, the social sciences and the humanities, so not focus on one individual discipline, and also that they really spanned uh, geographic uh, um, uh, representation. So we've, we ended up with eight awards that spanned uh, three continents across all of these, uh, all of these dimensions. Uh, the awardees, and so I know that some of you were, and we announced these this morning, and some of you participated in the award ceremony that we had in the morning session, um, but really had eight projects, like I said, that met all of those criteria. And, and you can read more about the projects at that link that's, that's listed there, but um, really projects, uh, so La Referencia, Openscapes, Pre-Review, SK Time, Africa Archive, uh, 2I2C, Humanities Common and the Knowledge Equity Lab. So congratulations to all of those awardees uh, that were, and we can do the, I've been doing my actual claps, like my, my clap uh, reaction uh, in real time, uh, but I hope that you will all just join me with your either virtual or real claps for, for all of these, these projects. Um, uh, and congratulations to, to them. And we know that they'll be putting the funds that go from these projects to, uh, to, good, uh, to good use. Uh, uh, several of those projects accepted the awards this morning, but we wanted to uh, also make sure that uh, we got the, the last two projects that had not had a chance yet to receive their awards. So there isn't a, a little thing that I can, a little trophy or a little plaque that I can hand off to you. Um, but I do want to, uh, in, in lieu of that, give you give the, uh, the two projects that uh, are present with us here today, uh, just a couple of minutes to be able to say a few words about, uh, about their projects and about what it is that they, um, they're hoping to do uh, with, uh, with this award. So why don't I uh, first turn it over uh, to Julia uh, Loans from Openscapes, and if we can um, give her the, the, the mic and the podium to just give us a few words and congratulations on the award. Great. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Julia Lowndes, and I, um, I founded Openscapes. So I'm just going to put up a slide here. Can you see that um, slide? Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, the, the IOI community has been so wonderful to get to know. And thank you for your support through JROS. Um, this project Openscapes is something that I uh, founded when I was a Mozilla fellow in the last year and a half and have also been supported institutionally at 
NCs at UC Santa Barbara and had some support from the Moore Foundation. And what IOI is going to do is let um, Aaron Robinson join OpenScapes as not only a thought leader and, you know, world changing schemer with me, but to actually um, put this to practice. So I'm so grateful to this community and, and to Aaron for, for joining. Um, so just I, I just put a couple slides together about OpenScapes um, to give a little introduction, but you know, we're, we really are operating in kind of the training space, but in a different angle of the training space. So we, um, we're, we're really focused on mentorship and coaching through the open reproducible research landscape. So this is an idea that we've been trying to visualize is that, you know, the, the goal here is open and reproducible and inclusive science, but there's a lot of different pathways you can take to, to go there. And we see OpenScapes as being kind of the park rangers to help welcome you and orient you to the landscape. Um, so this is artwork in, in progress that will soon, if you can imagine, be filled up with little teams of researchers that are being kind of guided around the various obstacles um, that might be in their paths or the different opportunities that they can have to, um, to really navigate this landscape. And I think part of this landscape is all of the tools and all of the communities and all of the practices that folks at, at IOI and JROS and beyond have been building. So um, our, our perspective is that um, there's, you know, we're, we're really trying to help research groups reimagine what data analysis can look like and help them develop modern skills that are of immediate value to them and help them cultivate collaborative and inclusive research teams. And so we mostly do this through um, our champions program, which is this remote by design and cohort based mentorship program that tries to help guide them through this landscape of all of the wonderful open data science tools that are out there to help them. And it also um, has a focus of empowering them as leaders and welcoming them to this broader open community. So these are just a little bit of details about our Champions program, which is this cohort based program for research team leads and team members um, that is, you know, trying to be respectful of researchers time. So it's a small time investment over multiple months with a real focus on um, empathy, inclusion and kindness and all of the challenges and folk, uh, things that folks are facing as researchers, but trying to welcome them into this data science landscape. And it's based on a lot of the work um, that Mozilla has done through the Open Leaders Program. So um, with this award, we're gonna actually be tailoring our um, champions program in order to learn more about how to be more, um, to, to have a bigger focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're gonna be leading a smaller, co a smaller sized uh, cohort with environmental scientists in 2021. Uh, with support from J. Ross. So thank you so much. And we're excited to um, be in touch with the community and to continue growing and to present more artwork as we figure um, everything out. So thank you so much to everybody. Yeah, congratulations again. And we're, we're also excited to see, uh, see what comes of this and to see you continue to grow. The, the, second, uh, the second project, I also just want to now open up and give our, her our congratulations to Daniela Sederi from Pre-Review uh, and the second awardee uh, of this evening tonight. So I can turn it over to you, Daniela. Congratulations uh, to you as well. We'd love to hear a little bit about what you're doing and what you're planning to use these funds. Thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations again to all the other awardees and to Julie. It is so great. And I'm, I'm in great company here. Um, I will, I have a, I didn't have slides and then Julie told me that she did and I'm like, what a man. So actually the only, I, I'm just gonna be brief, but um, do you all see a lot of red and faces? Yes. So um, before it's not an award for me, it's an award for a team that actually has put a lot of work into this uh, uh, in the past few years. And I wanna start by acknowledging the, uh, the co-founders and, and leadership team and Monica Granados um, uh, is, is top left and then Chen Hindle. Together we have been uh, building on this uh, 
ideas. It was just a side project. Um, and I'm going to tell you in a minute what Freedom View is, but just really want to say it's not it's not a, an award for me. It's an award, an award for an awesome team. And uh, until January, it was pretty much uh, the three of us. And then uh, a lot has happened this year. Uh, it has been a heck of a year. It's like uh, <laughs> uh, Kate, uh, Caitlin keeps uh, mentioning on, on Twitter, and I'm like, hell yeah. And uh, among these things, I also had a baby this year. So uh, I think up to until one week before I started maternity leave, I was like, oh my gosh, we need someone because I've been the only one full time. Sam and Monica have put a lot of effort into pre review, but as a, uh, as a part or, you know, on the, on the side of their full time job, which is incredible. And we added, uh, we were able to add, thanks to some funding that came in. Uh, Katrina Murphy to our uh, team, which has been incredibly uh, helpful. So um, I want to uh, a lot of kudos to uh, to all the new members, and then Antoinette Foster, who has joined us for um, uh, the Open Reviewers Mentoring Program that I'm going to tell you in a minute, and then uh, these uh, awesome uh, advisory committee members who have been uh, also putting their time and support uh, to help us um, be where we are right now. Um, so, what is Pre-Review? <laughs> I wanted to acknowledge the faces first. Um, and so, uh, at Pre-Review, we are um, trying to reimagine how scholarly peer review uh, happens, and specifically through, what do we say, like the lenses of, of equity. So when we think about like who should be the people who we uh, are invited in peer review, and when I talk about scholarly peer review as an evaluation process of, um, uh, of scholarly outputs so research and things like that. Um, there are a lot of problems with that. We had an entire session on it. Uh, and we decided to focus our mission on expanding the pool of, of peer reviewers um, and specifically impair, empowering early career researchers and researchers from underrepresented groups in scholarship into uh, contributing to scholarly evaluation. Uh, that being a huge bottleneck for uh, what knowledge is disseminated and what knowledge is uh, considered worth um, of sharing, which is still a, a big problem in, in scholarship. Um, and how do we do that? Um, well, we have uh, uh, what we call our three different pillars. Um, and the, the first one is very recent that I have here, but it's also my one of my uh, our favorites right now. And it's like this mentoring program. And I'm glad that Julie went first because it is uh, once again a mentoring co core based mentoring program that is um, uh, completely designed after the framework that Mozilla has put together. So hopefully a very successful um, uh, framework that enables mentees to come back as mentors. Um, but right now we have 10 fantastic early career researchers who are going through a 14 week program um, and they meet every week and uh, some weeks they meet, meet with their mentors who at the moment are editors but what we hope to do is that by the end of all the stages that we have designed for them they will come back as mentors um, and uh, we are trying to train this next generation of socially conscious reviewers um, we also run events uh, all online they were already online before the pandemic but now we don't have to run through how to use Zoom anymore, which is great. Um, and it's like uh, in, engaging the research community in collaborative discussions around preprints. Um, and, and then we uh, also have put a lot of uh, effort into building um, infrastructure that uh, can host this and can give a home to the output of these events. Uh, the truth is, is a lot of funding that have come, uh, the funding that comes so far has been supporting mostly like I would say 90%. 5% on infrastructure and not very much on the community building on the social infrastructure aspect that we are recognizing more and more is like the key part. In fact, I think we can drop this and, and, and continue the other program and that will be probably much more impactful. Um, and so I, the funding that we're getting uh, through the, um, the, the, fund, the response fund is gonna help us um, uh, scale and take what we have done and hopefully um, can model it um, and partner with other organizations such as Africa Archive and actually another Awardi to make these materials available for uh, remixing and contextualizing to different uh, um, uh, contexts and backgrounds. Um, and so, yeah, what we, what we need, we are running uh, as <laughs> close to the end of our road. Um, um, our runway uh, with a lot of partnership in place, with a lot of ideas on how to grow and scale and have more impact. 
So uh, this funding is going to allow us to have a little bit more time between before we are uh, with the <laughs> water in the neck, uh, as we say in Italy. I don't know if it's a thing that you say in English, but um, and so it is a really um, wonderful. And so thanks again for all of that, for all of the support. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that yeah, now you're right there with the funders, and we have also eLife, the team sponsor, as of announced today. Um, and all the people that have made this work possible. Thanks for listening. We're really glad that we could help you keep your head above water. It's very good work that you are, you're doing. So uh, so again, I, we, I know that within these virtual rooms, that the clapping, we just see those that if you, you know, uh, you kind of look at your gallery view and you can see the people giving the class, but to, to both of these projects and to all of the other awardees, um, as well. Uh, a, a big congratulations. Uh, we, we are happy that we're able to support this work. We just wish we could have supported you more and supported all of the other projects, uh, worthwhile projects as well. Um, we there There is one more opportunity for funding that has become available now. And I just want to just give a shout out that Sage Publishing is offering a $5,000 grant to build an open source tool that will help authors uh, to check if a manuscript has been anonymized before, uh, before double anonymous peer review. Uh, and so there's a more general announcement and contact information in the general Slack, uh, in the Slack channel. So that if you, if you haven't had enough awards, uh, I let people know that there's one more that, that is available for a specific, uh, a specific purpose. Um, so with that, let me just, uh, I'll say my goodbyes and I'll turn it over to Greg just to bring us home with a very final stretch. You've all hung in there after three uh, long and productive and fruitful day. So I'll turn it over to you, Greg, to just to say the last few words uh, and bring us home. Yeah. Sure. Terrific, thank you. Uh, so, so two more bits of housekeeping. Um, the meeting recordings will be made available, as I mentioned, um, they'll, be, they'll be after the holidays and we'll send out an announcement, of course. Um, and the IOA Slack will, will remain open for discussion. Um, I'll just say um, over, over the course of um, putting this meeting together, um, seeing the uh, submissions that came in uh, for the, the rapid response funds, hearing the presentations, um, being part of the, the, the breakout sessions. Um, I'm just so blown away by the, the diversity and the, the passion and the ingenuity and the, the collegiality of, of this, this group. Um, it, it really is inspiring to see. I think probably all of us suffer at times we feel like we're, we're working on our own little islands, right? And, and sometimes in the best of days, maybe we feel like we're, we're an archipelago. Um, but I'm starting to feel like maybe we're a continent, like maybe this is, maybe this is happening, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe things are starting to come together um, in, in a really interesting and exciting way. So um, I think about the, the first meeting we had, which was several years ago. Um, I really look forward to the next meeting we have, which I imagine will be in person um, and, and just seeing uh, how we continue to grow and evolve as a community. Uh, again, thank you to, uh, to the sponsors uh, for making this possible. Thank you to the organizing committee. Um, thank you especially uh, to, to Vanessa and Caitlin for all of the work they did, um, both uh, in, in, in the front of the house and in the back of the house to, to really make this smooth smoothly. And thanks to everyone for, for bringing your passion, your energy and your ideas uh, to, to these couple of days. We really, um, we really appreciate it. And with that, I think we will call a close on J Ross 2020. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great. Fantastic. Yeah.